Well, we might as well get started. Um, I'm speaking today on osmosis, which is a project that we developed internally at CEB, uh, and we use it for converting PDF files into PowerPoint. And this makes use of uh, two, uh, or at least two Apache projects, but the key ones are PDF box to consume uh, the PDF files, and then Apache POI to produce the PowerPoint. First uh, introduction, I'm David Fisher. I'm senior director of corporate IT, a senior director of corporate IT at CEB. I'm an Apache member, and on, I'm on several PMCs, POI, Open Office, the Incubator, Flex, and Olingo. And this project was developed um, uh, by a, few, a couple key developers, uh, one of whom is Igor Kozlov uh, from Dynam um, in Moscow, and he's an Apache member and on the POI PMC and Incubator PMC. He's the, actually the VP of POI and the release manager on occasion. Uh, and also Vadim Filatov, who is actually the, the owner of Dynam. Uh, he did a lot of the code. Um, his work was mostly on the PDF side, and Igor's was on the PowerPoint side. So first, a little bit of history. Uh, you know, I uh, have quite a, I've been in the uh, industry for, you know, well over 30 years, and I started off creating output and content. And I started off uh, creating uh, Xerox output to their meta code. And you know a key aspect of that is when you produced output, uh, it was a fast, you know, fast printer, um, 60 or 90 pages per minute. Uh, but you know it was underpowered by a PDP 11, and you know you had to get the content out. Bytes were at a premium, so you know we produced text uh, skipping spaces and things like that. So an early experience with uh, drivers and, and how idiosyncratic they can be. Um, then Adobe Postscript came out in the mid-1980s, and it was an excellent language for markup and allows you to do many things to do text, and it you know, took over the industry, as we all know. Um, a little bit later, Adobe came up with PDF, um, you know, the Acrobat uh, product line, um, this is about 1991. I was fortunate enough to beta test, um, and I also uh, produced uh, an output driver that created content in that format, and you know learned all about it. And it's you know a really nice PostScript subset. It's you know exactly what you need to output text and create shapes and fill them and stroke them and do all those fine things you need to do. So, you know, made heavy use of PostScript and the distiller and GhostScript and conversion to PDF ever since. It's, you know, a really important way of doing things. Then, you know, in the early 2000s, uh, we had a need to, you know, both consume Excel files and, you know, we needed to, to figure out how to create PowerPoints. And so, we found the Apache POI project and started, you know, at that time, you know, you had to, you know, consume the binary format. You had to figure out what it was. You had to, you know, basically hack the format and try things out and make it work. And Igor did a lot of work on that and we were able to do it. So we contributed it to the project and got brought into uh, the Apache Software Foundation in the way that everyone else does. You you find a project, you scratch your itch, and you start committing code, and they, people in the project like the code and invite you in. And you know, that, that format went, we did really well, and then OOXML came out, and we contributed that as well. So that was you know, foundation service. Uh, we had a need not necessarily to create uh, PDF to PostScript, I mean, PDF to PowerPoint, we had more of a need uh, to take our custom PostScript into PowerPoint and into PDF. So we developed some tools along the lines um, to um, handle the, 
the PowerPoint format. And, um, you know, so contributed it, and eventually both Igor and I became PMC members. So that's kind of our history. In parallel, uh, you know, in a few years back, uh, I was at an Apache Con, I think, in 2007. There was a guy who was, you know, had some stuff with a font, something called Fontbox, and was beginning to work on PDF. So uh, he was obviously encouraged and became, uh, became a project. And so we have a really nice project called PDF Box that does a lot of things with consuming PDFs and producing PDFs and putting PDFs together and stuff. So that's, that's the history. Um, so we created Osmosis as a web application uh, internally. And what it does is it provides, it's a simple, simple web application, has a nice interface to, you know, the form. You can choose, um, you can select a file, a PDF, on your desktop or a zip file with PDFs. And then you can, you know, adjust. If you just want a few pages, you can choose a custom range. You can, you know, turn on and off the options. Usually the defaults work very well. Um, there'll, there are cases where you might want to do other things. Uh, but, you know, in general, this works um, quite well. Um, so, you know, th these items are, you know, select your PDF. Uh, page ranges, you know, there are times where you just want a certain page or there are the rare PDF where uh, there's a problem with a particular page. So if you get an error, you go and by a process of elimination, run a few conversions, eliminating pages, and you, you get your results. Uh, shape grouping is about keeping together lines and fills and strokes so that they become a shape within PowerPoint and then you can manipulate them much more easily uh, rather than having a bunch of little lines that you have to try to group yourself. So that's a very handy thing. I'll, I'll show, show the, the power of that a little bit later. Orientation adjustments. Um, sometimes a PDF will get created where it's confusing about whether a page is landscape or, or portrait and, or it's an unusual size and you have to tell it what to do. So that's, that's what that's about. So um, usually you just follow the PDF settings, but at times you've got to you know, trust it to sort of look at the content and figure it out. Or you have to say, okay, you didn't get that right, rotate it 90 degrees. Um, then um, text composition. Uh, text composition, uh, what we try to do is we're trying to produce the largest text blocks possible out of the text on the page. That way it can be more freely edited so that you, know, you don't have to worry about line endings or shifting little blocks to keep them in alignment. The, the goal of this tool is you know, to recover a PDF and edit it for small edits or large edits. So um, this is very handy. It most often works, but sometimes you want to dial it back. Uh, similarly, with, with line breaks, also sometimes you really want to enforce and keep your hard line endings. Other times you want to let it flow. Um, that is, uh, you know, gets into the font situation. Um, with fonts, uh, in a PDF, the fonts are um, re-encoded and uh, they tend to produce the minimal size font file embedded in the PDF. They don't want to give away the fonts, but they want the fonts and the characters to render as you intended them in the PDF. That's the philosophy that Adobe has had since the beginning of Acrobat, and it's built into the format. So that encoding and re-encoding and de-encoding is an issue. And you may not have the font, you may not have a license to the font, so there we have some ability to font map. We have ability to, we, there's some defaults embedded in the code. They're, you know, obviously they're currently set for CEB standards, but there's a mapping available. And then this option for desktop fonts, it lets you choose whether or not to follow that or go more generic. 
and I, I'm going to show a little. I'm going to show a little something. If if you don't like the choices that have been made, you have a chance to override the font mapping and then reconvert. So here's a, an example of a page in a PDF, and you can see that it has, um, you know, has a bullet on the side. It has, you know, really thin. Uh, a paragraph, you can see that if you needed to edit that and make it look good, uh, you might have some issues and it, it might be rather tedious moving things around and doing it line by line and moving things around. And then if you were an acrobat doing it, you might actually encounter the problem that you wanted to use a character that was not in the font that was left in the PDF because that character had been removed during the re-encoding that they do. So, you know, you have to deal with that. And uh, also on this page, you can see we've got a, a couple little graphics that, you know, you might want to manipulate. So it's a, a little sample. So anyway, you, you run that PDF through and you select that particular page from that PDF. Uh, there's a results page that looks like this. And I, I, I clicked on the fonts tab here. So you can see that if you click on the PowerPoint font here, you can choose your option and, and map it. Uh, you can see that this document had, you know, a lot of different weights of the font. And you're not really going to get all those weights into PowerPoint. So, you know, without doing a lot of things with different versions of font, because PowerPoint has your typical, you know, four font styles for a given font. They don't have the, the rich multi-styles that you, you would expect in a, in a true typesetting program. So you know, those are the kinds of um, you know, choices you have to make to get it into PowerPoint. Um, we also have an area for feedback so that you know, they send an email off with a question about why this doesn't get converted properly. And I think in the year and a half that this has been running, I've received maybe 10 emails that way. So it's, it's running very well. Um, so um, here's the PowerPoint version of the file, of the page. And you can see it, it pretty much looks the same. Unless you are a real uh, expert at fonts and, and, and really attuned to you know, light or heavy, you wouldn't really notice a difference. So then what I did here is I, 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 highlight, I highlighted the, the text block with the bullet point to show that in fact it's properly set up as a bulleted text block with left justification. And you could go in there and edit it, change it, flow it, do what you need to do. The other thing I did is I went and I selected, um, I just clicked on that image and it's all grouped because we had shape grouping. And it's actually grouped at multiple levels. So I ungrouped it and got this set of groups. So now you have all these little graphic elements that, you know, maybe they came out of InDesign and someone's created all kinds of fancy, you know, shapes and diagrams and stuff like that. And you, you want to select an element out and reuse it somewhere. And you don't want to go to your central publishing team to get a little graphic. You just want to make use of it. So I selected the, the light bulb. And then I copied and pasted it. And now I have a light bulb that I can use. You know, it goes on the clipboard and you can take it anywhere. So that's handy. So there's over a thousand internal users have used the system. You know, CEB has about, it's gone from three to four thousand employees. So that's a, a good chunk of the, of the company. And it's been a huge time savings. And, you know, the PDFs that have been converted have come from all kinds of different versions of drivers and programs and stuff going back, you know, content produced as early as 1997. And, um, you know, there's, you know, CEB is an advisory firm. 
So the IP of the content, the IP is a big part of the company's value and being able to reuse it easily is really important. They've, you know, they don't even have the originals of some of the stuff. All they have is the PDF. So it's, it's worked really, really, really well. Um, so a little highlights of what we did with, uh, with PDF box. And I, um, we have a build JSP and then in that build JSP, uh, we make use of a, three different classes out of PDF box around the document, decryption of the document, uh, do, the metadata from the document. And then we have a, a couple of our own classes that were important, an export class, which is just the basis of all our conversions, and then an extension of that called PD job for this particular pro process. So this is a condensed version of our, of our build.jsp. Um, you know, it, it, it creates the export. It um, gets a real place to store it. Um, you know, goes through the process of opening the document, decrypting it. Um, you know, counts the number of pages, gets some information out of it. Um, then stores that information in the export, short, stores the, you know, the choices for the conversion, you know, your basic things you do. And at the bottom, it uh, kicks off the job. Now, one of the cool things we have in this, since we're running on a Tomcat instance, and you know, these can be big chunks of conversion, we want to manage our heap. So we manage the heap, and we set up an ex we have the ability to either run outside the process and then you know, run, a, run a queue, a stream, or we can run uh, up to three jobs internally. And you know, we're watching the heap in case things get big so we can stop it from OOM. And that's been pretty effective. Um, the PDF engine classes that we have is we have, we have you know, several of our own classes that build a stack. Um, you know, there's a this, uh, PD to PS PPT, which you know basically is in charge of the processing. Um, it extends this PD to PS engine, which is uh, basically drives the conversion of the PDF into an internal, uh, specially commented postscript file that can then become the basis for the PowerPoint conversion of it page by page. Uh, an object engine that organizes the content, and then uh, low-level calls to PDF box to the COS model. There are a few models in, in PDF. There's a, it's an object model system. Um, it's, it's, a, it's essentially a dialect of PostScript, uh, PostScript dictionary format, and with the reference tables that used to be at the end and now are at the beginning. And you know, so the low level, there's a page level set of objects, there's fonts, uh, but at the lowest level, there's just uh, various operators that are wrapped up in an object. So, for example, in the PD engine, uh, this is a, uh, where we're in a, a graphic state um, and we're uh, processing, you know, the nodes, the state, the cause statements as they go along. They, you know, each, they're little two character or one character operators and it's all been, you know, Adobe's always been very good at documenting the PDF and documenting uh, PostScript, you know, they, they, they publish the book before they, um, before they release the software, you know, at every time. So, um, you know, I've had the, the, it's like a, you know, a thick book, you know, a couple inches thick, and I used to have those on my desk all the time. Now they're PDFs online, um, but no what? No, no, they're not PowerPoint files. I don't know that you'd want them to be PowerPoint files. One of one of one of the one of the tricks that we have to do is, you know, a PDF can have a mix of page sizes, and PowerPoint, it's one size, in one file. So, if, for example, we get a mix 
of you know, landscape page mixed with portrait, we have to actually produce two PowerPoints and separate it out, one for the landscape and one for the portrait. And then the user has to figure out what they want to do with that. So you can see this thing, you know, handles you know, your basic things, line, start, line width, line caps, line joins, you know, all those little tiny things that you have to do. Um, you know, there's some rendering intents and things like that. Um, and um, different things with color, um, you know, adjusting for the stroke size and the pixelation, I think that's what that is. Just various things. So we process all that into a, into a, a PostScript file internally. And then we, we go and we convert it to uh, PowerPoint. And we have a series of classes that sit on top of POI uh, that handle the graphics 2D at various levels. We have uh, uh, CF text graphics, which actually stands for Chart Factory. Um, and it, it handles text runs. And it puts together the text and handles the bullets and all that stuff. And then Office Graphics 2D handles things more in terms of shape processing and stuff like that. And then there's an abstract graphics 2D, which extends graphics, the Java graphics 2D. And those things uh, call XLSF slideshow, which is your basic support. And they also, of course, make calls to, they make a few calls directly to the OXML model and the beans as well. Um, here's an example from Office graphics 2D of, of creating a shape. So that's basically it. It's um, a freeform shape. And um, set the path, pass it the path, pass it the color to paint it. And um, that's it. So here's another one, um, finding a, a good font based on the aspect ratios because um, you know, you can do some transformations of the text and the font inside the PDF that PowerPoint doesn't know how to do. So, um, you know, PDFs have a, uh, and, and PostScript as well, have a content, uh, have a, a, a current transformation matrix, which is, you know, your, your, your basic, um, you know, graphical matrix for, for transforming and so you know, that can give you a skewed or, or slanted or um, you know, squashed version. So what, what, this, what this piece of code does is it, it figures out the scale and then figures out you know, a font that PowerPoint has in that, in that particular font choice, what the proper size is to size it so it, it looks good or it looks as best as it can. So that, there's a couple little tidbits of the code. Um, you know, there's a little example here, this, you know, comment about, you know, what's going on there. And I guess I went pretty quickly. 25 minutes more. So, um, I mean, that's basically it. But the cool thing is, is it, it's a, it, it, we've also done, um, the reason why we chose to have an internal format that's PostScript commented type thing rather than doing it all within one engine is that we can take that output and produce other kinds of content. So we also have PDF to HTML5. So, and that renders very nicely, but I'm not showing that here this time, but, um, and, you know, any, any, any questions? Well, yeah, you, in PowerPoint, you can go, you know, it, it's native, save to PDF. Yeah. 
Well, if you don't have Microsoft Office, you probably don't want PowerPoint. Job converter, or you can go into Open Office and you can open up the PowerPoint in Open Office and use its PDF. You can. Yeah, he did the slideshow version where it's um, the prior thing is to PNG. So this is using this is using some of the same code. Only it's producing shapes inside the the OXML. So, but you can use Open Office. That's free. And you know to go to PDF. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, I mean, actually, in the, the later versions of Acrobat X, the, if you're buying the full version of Acrobat, they have a save to PowerPoint option now. Um, you know, it, one of our motivations to go down this path is we were, uh, before we went and found Poi, we, were, we had a Javacom bridge, and we created our PowerPoints by converting stuff into Macintosh PIC files because we had an old PIC driver from the 80s. And then we like, used the COM bridge to place them into PowerPoint. And then you know, that was driving a GUI in the data center. <laughs> you know? And then if that machine didn't start up right, someone would have to go walk three blocks, you know, thumb themselves in, and do the key, open it up, turn the KVM on, and type in the password. And then, of course, that was single-threaded. So we were, we were motivated to find a better way by that as well. Um, and you know, that's, there's a, I think there's a lot of possibilities with this, this, this process. And I, you know, I have a few next steps. I think it may be a combination of a lab and talking to my corporate legal department. But it would be nice to turn this into either a contribution to a project or a project in and of itself. Well, what we need is like the universal content converter. I mean, it's like you look at a project like Tika, and Tika is really about extraction of content. It's not so much about shapes as text, correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to get close, but you know, if they don't have a font, if they have a font that you can't use, that's you know tough, because you know font licensing can be tricky. And if they just embedded it in in there, and then you know you can't necessarily make use, you know, you can't necessarily use it unless you're giving it back to them and they have the font. That's, you know, there are starting to be fonts that are Apache licensed, so that's an interesting aspect, you know, something like uh, some, a, a project that, that, you know, around osmosis, 
around this process would want to make use of a, a good library of Apache licensed or other open licensed fonts and have them built in. Uh, Adobe Font Metrics files are Apache licensed, so that, that gives you a head start. You could at least um, have the metrics for a lot of fonts so that you can measure them. There, you can get the measurements internally too from, from, PD, from the PDF box. So that, that's important in trying to find a, a match. You know, you have to, you know, you know, pick out something that has similar, similar widths, similar X height. And then it will look closer, you know, but, you know, it's, it's really about doing the content and then letting the designer redo it. You know, this whole, the whole idea to making the text editable and putting it in a text box is that little differences in the font don't matter as much because you're reflowing it with whatever font that you have, um, that you decide you're using in your output. And you know, that's you know that's kind of a, a key a key trick. And um, you know it's sort of a best effort. You know. If, you tried to be a hundred percent on fonts, you'd you'd bash your head your forehead bloody. That would not be the thing. <laughs>